Good morning. Welcome to this worship service at Universal City United Methodist Church. This is the third Sunday after Pentecost. We want to thank you for joining us, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, and also those of you worshiping with us via online worship. Um, if you want to give a gift to one of our missions, please make your check out to UCUMC, noting it is for that specific mission. Our featured mission partner this month is one who's near and dear to me. That's my daughter, Kim, uh, who's a crew missionary with Campus Crusade uh, in uh, Russia, currently serving here uh, in San Antonio. Our summer suppers are a great success. We want to thank everyone who's helped join us uh, to create an, es an especially uh, neat event each Wednesday. Wednesday, the 16th of June, this Wednesday, the menu you're not going to want to miss is fried chicken. We'd love to see everyone uh, for some great fun and fellowship. Um, there's a hospitality sign-up sheet in the Narthex where you can sign up to assist with that uh, to facilitate our summer supper event. The Family Life Ministry team could also use your help relating to that on the fourth Wednesday of each month at Summer Suppers. We're going to highlight a mission or an outreach opportunity. For the month of June, we'll be creating blessing bags to share with homeless individuals we come across in our daily lives. If you'd like to support this effort, uh, we could use items on the donation list in the Narthex. United Methodist Women will be taking a break. Uh, between uh, June and July, and we'll resume their normal monthly meetings the third uh, Thursday in August. Uh, save the date. Uh, they're going to have a specific uh, fundraiser affordable boutique uh, Saturday, August 28th from uh, 9 to 12. Contact uh, UMW or the church office to donate. United Methodist Men will have its monthly meeting this Saturday at 8 a.m. in Fellowship Hall. Uh, so if you're able, please plan to attend that meeting, our men. And then following that, those who are available and able <laughs> will be assisting with our church workday, which continues on the Saturdays during June. Uh, you'll notice when we have our uh, joys and concerns, you're going to see some slides from that workday. Uh, we'd encourage you to continue to come out as we continue to clean up our campus and make it more friendly for all those who come to worship with us. As you probably already have noticed, our new worship service times and fellowship times are at 8.30 a.m. for traditional worship with the Lord's Supper, uh, and at 10 a.m. our relaxed family worship. In between, we have fellowship time and, the, and uh, refreshments in the fellowship hall, and also our adult Sunday school classes. Um, let's see, this service uh, will include our children's moment, uh, for those of you who have not been in attendance here before, so uh, encourage you to bring your kids with you for that. And the last thing we'll mention, if you have a prayer concern, if you desire a deeper connection with this family of faith community, or if you wish a call from one of our pastors or a member of our care team, uh, please contact the church office. And if you know someone who is looking for a faith connection, please help us connect better with them. Better yet, invite them to come to church with you. We live to serve, to love, and to grow. Let us enter into a time of silence as we prepare for our morning worship. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship as printed on the screen. In Christ, hope shines brightly in the world. May the light of Christ shine brightly upon us. May the light nourish and guide us and show us the path to new life. Let us worship our Lord with joy. 
the light of the Lord of God shines in our midst. Our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. Carla. <clears throat> All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh, praise ye, alleluia. Good to see you. Today's scripture is another one that could be, let's just say, called hard to understand. It's from 2 Corinthians, and a piece of it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. I wonder what that means to you. I think it's telling us that God works through and in each of us to help us grow. For example, I want you to think back over the whole year. I bet you can think of something that you do very differently than you did a year ago. Maybe you got taller. Maybe you figured out how to multiply fractions. Maybe you just worked hard in school. But you practiced, and you practiced, and you got better at it. 
And when you look back a year later, you can even see it and say, wow, I'm way better at this than I used to be. And that's one of the big truths about following Jesus, too, is that we're never done growing. God wants us to be challenged, and he wants to help us grow, but we have to practice at it. We have to spend a lot of time working on it. We have to go to church. We have to pray. We have to read our Bible. And we have to listen for God to talk to us. Because no matter how good we are, we've got to continue growing with patience and learning what God wants from us. We're going to make mistakes. And when we do, that's okay. We just tell God. He forgives us. Our actions and our deeds matter, and God cares about that, but he also cares about what's on our hearts. He cares about our motives and our thoughts and our attitudes, because God's watching us grow, and God is proud of you. God is proud of us. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, thank you for giving us the space and time to grow. We are so grateful to have room to make mistakes and to know that we will always be forgiven. Help us to keep practicing what you teach us each day and help us to grow in your love. Amen. If anybody would like to come to Children's Church, follow me.
Thank you for that true blessing. We come to a time in this worship service where we have the opportunity to share our joys and our concerns. As I mentioned, we've been having our weekly work days on uh, Saturdays during the month of June. There's a few slides here that you're going to see of people working to spruce up the campus. Uh, we'll continue with those for the remaining Saturdays in June. So if you'd like to help participate in that uh, from 8 until noon every Saturday morning, we'll be doing that. Uh, joys and concerns. First of all, uh, Martha Stevenson had successful breast cancer surgery on Thursday. We got uh, word this morning that she's recovering very well. Uh, I'd like you to continue to pray for her speedy and complete recovery. A friend of Yvonne Foster's has fallen in his home and is now in an assisted living facility. She asks that we pray for a successful recovery after back surgery. And we're sad to announce the passing of Linda Prater's mother, Wanda Tucker, uh, so ask you to be in prayer. She passed away on June the 9th for Linda and for Richard as they uh, grieve and mourn the loss of uh, Linda's mother. Let's be in prayer together. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. It is good to be able to come into your house and to worship through the miracle of technology and to have the time to put aside the cares of life and the busyness of living. We're hurrying about planning, preparing, fixing, organizing, and worrying about how everything is going to turn out. Even while we're here in church, those thoughts tend to drown out your voice and what you want to say to us. We do want to hear from you because we need to know again and anew today that you're there and that you know us and where we are in our walk with you. For some here today, Father, this present moment is filled with disappointment or impairment or headache or heartache, and their circumstances may be dreadful and filled with reasons for sadness or sorrow. They need you, and we need you, to comfort us by being in fellowship with you and with each other. We do receive uplift and encouragement from being here in your house or worshiping online. Help us to be sensitive to the needs of our brothers and sisters and speak a word of encouragement or even give a sincere smile or fist bump. We care about each other and we want to show it. Father, on this day we pray, pray for our leaders. We know that many of them are praying men and women and they're thankful for their influence in the affairs of our nation. Father, we pray for our first responders and all men and women in uniform who go in harm's way on our behalf. Protect them, Father. We pray for the spread of your word around the world. We know that there are Christians in every nation and many of them live under constant danger and threats on their very lives. We pray for our missionary force those who are laboring in many different ways to witness to needy people, give wisdom and spiritual strength, and make them effective in their work for your kingdom. Father, as always, we pray for our pastor this morning as she brings the message to us in just a few moments. We pray for your anointing power upon her. Give her clearness of thought and the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in the name of the Lord of faithful hearts and actions, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. tossed and driven on 
the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempted off succeed a bright sunshine in that land of perfect day when the mist rolled away. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of things that life commands want of food and want of shelter thirsty hills and barren land we are trusting in the lord and according to god's word we will understand it better by and by by and by when the morning comes when the saints of god are gathered home we will tell the story of how we've over for we'll understand it better by and by. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. For we'll understand it better by and by. By and by. Temptations, hidden snares, often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for a thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test, when we try to do our best, but we understand it better by and by. The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8 and 14 through 17. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So, we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer that way. 
So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Living in the meantime. Isn't that intriguing? Long time ago, well, I've heard the story of Abraham and Sarah many, many times over the years, but I remember one time in particular, I know I've shared it with you before, but it was powerful because it was life-changing. You see, God spoke to Abraham, who called him by name Abraham. And Abraham said, Hanani, here I am. Good response always when God calls us by name, Amen. Abraham, Hanani, Hanani, Lord, here I am. He said, Abraham, I want you to take your family. I want you to take all that you own. I want you to take your animals, and I want you to go to the place I will show you. What? No, that's not a plan, Lord. I need to know where we're going. I need to know what time we're going to get there. I need to know how long it's going to take. I need to know, Lord. Come on, you're going to have to give me more than that, Lord. Go to the place I will show you. First time I heard those words, and I mean really heard those words, I wanted to throw up. I'm not joking. I heard them. God calls by name, each of us, all the time. Bob, Lenny, Becky. Right? I want you to go to the place I will show you, church. Let us pray. Gracious God, here we are. Here we are, Hanani. Open your word to us today that our hearts and minds might receive what it is that you are speaking. Give us courage, Lord, and make us bold that we will go to that place that you show us. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, Paul is speaking to us today. He is speaking to us today. One of the things about Paul when he's writing, he may be talking to the uh, church in Corinth, but he is talking to us today. And he is talking about living in the meantime, just like Abraham and Sarah, just like all of the people, all of the faithful, more than 200 stories in all of the Old Testament. Hanani, when they get called by name, Hanani, here I am, and then comes the will of God. Right? Where else would we want to be? But it's living in the meantime. It's living in that realm of the unknown. When I first arrived, we started talking a little bit about thresholds. Do you remember that? That was almost a year ago. That holy ground, that space that does not belong to me, it is not my plan. I can show up. It's good that I would. It is good that we would, but in the threshold, you see, this is simply the place of encounter. It is encounter with that which God has planned. It is encounter with the other. It is the encounter with God, and it changes everything. It is transformation, because in this threshold, in this place of living in the meantime, you see, there is revelation. There is revelation. This is where we meet God's will. This is how it is that we come to understand that we are to go. It can be a perplexing time. It can be the time when we say to the Lord, what? Are you talking to me? Surely this is not true. We've heard this throughout the biblical text. And are you speaking to me? No, Lord, it could not be me. Surely it could not be so. Let me give you my list of reasons why. But Paul is talking about something in the text today that is about walking by faith and not by sight. And for me, in this reading of the text, this is what kept coming to the surface. It's about walking by faith and not by sight. It's not by those things that we can reason. It's not by those things that we can strategically plan. Paul is saying to the church in Corinth, and Paul is saying to us today that we are to walk by faith, right? We are to walk by faith. 
we are to enter into that living in the meantime, that which was and that which is becoming, and we are invited to be a part of that. We are invited to be a part of what it is that God is getting ready to do. It is happening all around us. It is happening all the time. It is happening right now. Paul speaks to us today. Welcome. Welcome to life in the meantime. This week, among many other things going on, I so appreciated Sarah um, gracefully uh, explaining that we have to practice some things. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? It's true, so many things in life. We are, we are this summer, I think, really in a season of living in the meantime. First of all, yes, thank you. First of all, we are, we are waking up, right? The whole world is waking up. Things are changing all around us. It didn't change all at the same time. But we are starting to emerge on the other side of something called COVID-19. We're not through it yet. It's not done with us yet. But we are more liberated now, aren't we? Just a bit. I'm starting to look around and I've got my mask on and more and more I'm finding I may be the only one in the crowd, even at the grocery store. It's a sign that things are changing. It is the time that we have prayed and hoped for. We are emerging from the other side. So many things that we have planned for and prepared for are now beginning to happen Wednesday nights, which have been such a joy. So good to see so many people coming. So good to be meeting new people, new faces, new stories. God bringing us together in powerful ways for powerful reasons. We will need to be practicing this living in the meantime and walking by faith in the months that are coming. Yes, there's a lot of practicing going on. A couple of Wednesdays ago, Sarah stood up and was telling everybody about the blessing bags. You see, each month we're going to have a mission project. We want new people to be coming in. We want especially for the children to become involved. And we had two new families that particular Wednesday, and one was a family with six children there, and they are a family of very modest means. We might call them poor. We might, except for that they walk by faith. And if they're poor, they don't know it. Sarah was talking to them about how it is that we would be collecting goods, food items, socks, and things like that, that we would be putting them into packages that we could distribute to those who have no home. And these six children, ages four to about 16, were listening to this. And I got a text message later from their mother saying, I have some donation. Where can I drop them off? Are you still at the church? I said, no, I'm not. But you know, my house is just across the parking lot. I'm that brick house right across the parking lot. The garage door is open. Can you just leave them there? And I got home that evening expecting to find a few little white plastic bags from the grocery store. It took two loads in my van to bring the food to the church to put on the table for the blessing bags. Rafe helped me with the trolley. We might call them poor, but you see, they walk by faith. And they have been helped, and they wanted to help others. The children took their allowance. The mother told me that they had just been given the day before because she was working again here, children, here's some money. I want you to have it. This is your allowance. And they decided that very evening that allowance was going to go to the grocery store. And they all did what they could. It took me two trips with my van to bring the groceries over to church. You see, that is a story of walking by faith and trusting that the God who calls us forward and trusting that the God who speaks to our heart is not going to disappoint, but will lead us to that place of holy encounter. And we do not know, nor do they, how the gift will impact the lives of those who receive, but God knows, and they trust it. I hear Paul talking us today that we are those who live in the meantime, that we're simply called to go. Hanani, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. 
And along the way, Abraham and Sarah, they stopped as they moved in their journey. They stopped not to plead and not to beg, not to wring their hands, but to give thanks to the God who was leading them forward. We are invited, church, also to live in this meantime. So annual conference this week, I got to hear a lot of inspiring stories. I got to listen to our bishop, who I always enjoy listening to. Very um, spiritual man, very grounded man, very calming man. And while much of the church around the world is wringing their hands right now, not Rio, Texas conference. We are a pretty healthy conference. We are a healthy congregation, and we are blessed that those around us are healthy. We are persevering in strength. The good work carries on, even as we live in this season of the meantime. And as we were um, spending time together, the bishop, with all of us virtually, he was calling out and he was naming for us uh, some of the challenges of the past year and some of the challenges that are coming up ahead, just calling them out by the name. Let's just live together in this ambiguity of what it means to be in the world that is filled with so much that really is beyond our control. And as he was talking, I saw before my eyes, imagination, the faces and the names of brothers and sisters who truly have been going through so much. I, I thought of my friend who has left ministry that he, he truly felt that he had become so estranged uh, uh, that it was time for him simply to leave. I thought of another colleague who lost a very young child this year and his grief. I thought of another colleague in his 40s who has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He said, my aunt was diagnosed when she was 49 and she was dead by 50, this young man whose son just graduated. Yeah. I thought of the names and the faces of other colleagues who have walked difficult roads and how we have prayed with one another in support of one another. And then the bishop said something that really caught my ear. He said, you can do hard things, church, because you have done hard things. You have done hard things, church. You can do hard things. We walk by faith, we know, like Paul, that this is not all there is. Paul wants to be with Christ, and yet Paul says, but in flesh I am able to serve Christ. I am with you all, church, he says. I want to be with Christ. This is my greatest desire, but in flesh I might serve Christ. Let it be with me according to God's will. Here I am, Lord living in the meantime between that which I know and that which is to come, this ambiguous threshold, walking by faith. And then Paul speaks to the church and he says, ambassadors, that's what you are. You are ambassadors. You have a message to share. You see, it's not just about you. It was never just about Abraham and Sarah making a journey. There was a journey with a purpose. There's always a purpose. There's always a reason for what it is that God calls us forward to do and walk by faith in the good times, in the very hard times, even in those liminal moments between life and death. Living in the meantime, we are called to the places that God will show us. Yes. Also part of annual conference are the stories that we will hear from the mission field, other churches, the people, out in the world doing good things. And one of the stories that really stood out to me was Pastor Carolyn Pittman, who is a uh, pastor who has two churches. They are black Methodist churches in a small town, Gonzales. 
And Pastor Pittman was there to praise God. She said, you know, our heart was already in the community. Our heart was already there. We gathered together. We prayed together. We worshiped together. We worked together. But what we learned this year was how to go out into our communities and talk to our neighbors and to listen to them. And you know what we learned when we listened to our neighbors? These two small churches that the world would say do not matter much at all. But they had a different idea. You see, they heard their name called. They said, Haneni, Lord, here we are. Lead us to this place. We do not know how to go on our own. It turns out they heard God's voice and the voices of their neighbors. And what their neighbors were telling them is our young people, our young black children are getting through school. They do not know how to read. And, and their futures are just as tangled up and complicated and heavy as were ours, say their parents. Our young people don't know how to read. So we didn't know exactly what to do with that, but we started with prayer. We got together and we started with prayer. We were listening to the community. We did not know how to do this, but we started talking to people who led us to people. God showed us the way. And in the end, you see, they were working with the school system, and they put together a tutoring program. And there we saw the faces of about 15 boys and girls, happy faces. You see, they were graduates. They are now alumni of this program. These two small churches the world has no use for who taught these children how to read, and they go on. This is how it is when we listen with our hearts and minds to what it is that God is speaking, calling us out to do. But we must surrender our limiting ideas. We must surrender our imaginations to God's imagination so that we might go where it is God would send us. So God is at work here also, and I see evidence of that all the time. I sit in my office and I see you all, and hear of you coming and going and, and the work that you are doing quietly, unassuming, just being ambassadors of Christ in the world, saying, yes, Lord, here I am, Hanani. Some of you are starting to plant ideas. I wonder what would happen if we did this. Well, I wonder indeed. Let us pray about that. And others are simply going around continually as you have done and serving in faith, walking in faith, trusting that your offering given in love can be trusted in God's hands to do good work, transformative work. And we are practicing. It's happening in work days. It's happening in worship. It's happening on Wednesday nights in powerful ways. I can hardly wait to see what it is that God will be doing. We are ambassadors. And the message, says Paul, is this. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. And you are free. You are redeemed. Now, rise up, go, and share the good news. I do not know what it's going to look like. I only know that God is good and trustworthy. I only know that when God calls us out by name, and we say to God, Haneni, here I am, here we are. And as we go forward, giving thanks along the way, God will take us to that place God has planned. So you are loved, and you are free, and we are redeemed, church. So going forward, living in this time of in-between, let us walk in faith, trusting in God. Let us rise and go and share this good news. We affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Your gifts make a difference, both your financial gifts and your talents and your time. You can look around the campus and see the difference that they make. They make a difference in this neighborhood, this city, and across the border. We thank you for those gifts. You can leave your tithes and offerings on either side in the baskets. You leave the sanctuary. There are several other ways. You can text UCUMCTX to 73256. You can give online through Realm. Or can, you can give on the church website by clicking the Give Online button. You can give through your financial institution by using bill pay, or you can send your check through the mail. Join me in prayer. Lord of all bounty and blessing, the gifts we offer to you are like seeds. Some will take root nearby, and we will see them grow and bear fruit. Some will be carried far beyond where we can see, and we have faith that they will find good soil and thrive. We thank you for the privilege of being called to sow. Bless with the joy of good fruit, the seed that we will see and the seed we will never see. We pray this in the loving name of Jesus, gardener and savior, amen. hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. Living in the meantime, church. Isn't that exciting? 
because we live in Christ. And all things now are new. So go, know that you are loved, know that you are free, know that you are redeemed and restored and rise up church and go and share this good news because you are held already in the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit who will show us the way. Amen. I appreciate it.